Happy Saturday, everyone. It's uh, the 10th of December, uh, 2022. The time is 3.12 p.m. This is Grace Changes Everything, part 330. Brothers and sisters, this is, this is the new me, once again. Makes me look a bit younger. Looking more like my dad. Anyway, <clears throat> I was watching a few videos this morning, mainly on the hell issue, which is very, very um, piercing to the soul. You stir up your conscience. How important it is to accept Jesus Christ or end up in hell. Well, what is hell? Well, Jesus spoke more about hell than heaven, and I wouldn't like to be wrong, but I know in the teachings of the Latter-day Saint Mormon Church, hell is a place where you go, where you're separated from Jesus Christ. It's not forever lasting burning. That takes place in the soul prison for unrepented sins, where you have not changed your mind here, because the Bible doesn't mention repenting of sins, because... God knows we cannot in the fallen condition. We can try, but <clears throat> never overcoming, really. We have to give up our self-righteousness, enter into Christ's righteousness. Thus the enabling power of the Holy Spirit is and becomes your strength to live obedient. It's called the finished works upon the cross. The grace covers it all. It's a free gift. You don't have to earn it. What comes after that is the works. You could call, call it ordinances and priesthood, rituals, but that doesn't save you. That's just <clears throat> an added bonus. Uh, grace must come first, and a lot of religious people are not doing that. Catholics are not doing it. Protestants are not doing it, and the Latter-day Saint Mormons aren't doing it. They're all trying to earn heaven, learn heaven, and priesthood comes before anything. However, before the foundations of the world, it was priesthood, the royal priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says none after him. However when, he, however, when he was crucified on the cross, uh, grace then became sufficient. So grace became more important um, because God gave us a way how to repent by changing our mind, to accept him, love him and testify of the blood of Jesus Christ, outreach with love, kindness, charity, empathy, love, understanding, because without that, uh, in fact, without charity, you are nothing. Without all the attributes of Jesus Christ, the fruits of the Spirit, you are nothing but dead men's bones. Even people who hold priesthood and positions, nothing but dead men's bones without the grace. You try and tell this to Latter-day Saint leaders, they'll shun you, or they'll block you, or they won't talk to you. Um, they are in a position of power, and they really believe that they have the authority now, be it so that the Levitical priesthood was the authority of the day, not Catholic counterfeit priesthood, but it was also that Levitical priesthood that the Jews held that led to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ because of their self-righteousness. They were puffed up and proud, and Jesus Christ despised the, the Jews at the time, turned his back even on the temples that were built as an hypocrisy. <coughs> um... An Apostle Paul chastised Peter, uh, saying that we're not under the law anymore of the priesthood. Uh, we're now under the, the, you could say, the law of love, grace, that covers it all, even including Sabbath. Um, and of course the Sabbath was originally Saturday. And of course Jesus healed on the Sabbath and, you know, broke rules in some ways. It's not about the letter of the law. It's about the spirit of the law. Now once we accept Jesus Christ and we're born again, we still can be under, under the influence of Satan, the devil. Um, we can be influenced, but not so much demonic possessed. A lot of religious people trying to live up to all those commandments and live in fear, shame and guilt and answering to priests can, can turn their heads 360 degrees and spit on the Lord because they feel like crap. They can't do it, so they turn very bad, evil. 
which could be, could have been unnecessary if they had discovered this grace that sets you free. As Apostle Paul said, know the truth that sets you free. Now I'm not disputing or, or despising the priesthood because Levitical was it and there are a few scriptures that foretold a restoration of all things um, and other lost books the stick of Joseph and the Bible is accounted for as the stick of Judah and it would become one so and Isaiah 29 foretold of a lost book so okay fair enough then it wouldn't be a false angel preaching a false message Though Paul did say if he came back as an angel preaching any other message but this grace, let that man be accursed. So that's how important grace is. All right? What comes after that is a bonus. And even Latter day Saints, Catholics, Protestants should be putting the grace first. Grace to Latter day Saints is simply resurrection for all called everlasting life, but eternal life is to be in God's presence, exalted. Uh, sit on your little thrones as little gods and rule and reign over planets create them and have lots of wives Just like God Heavenly Father does plus Heavenly Father got a body not biblical at all, but <coughs> uh, It's, a, it's a quite a romantic concept and people buy into it because of the happy happy little feelings They have and if they lose their eternal family they basically become, a lot of them become atheists because they don't really know Jesus Christ you don't know Jesus Christ to get out of the fallen condition and enter into the spirit level where Christ is doing it all for you and you feel so grateful the works will come forth with naturally not forcefully and you've been set free and uh, and yet a grace saved Christian who lives this way cannot be exalted because he hasn't yet accepted the priesthood um, it's a very difficult matter for a, for a, a grace saved Christian to suddenly add the law and then they teach the importance of obedience to save you and the laws and leave out the grace Apostle Paul's dispensation of grace was supposed to be in it and then came the restoration of the priesthood in uh, 1820 onwards which then became the dispensation of the prophet Joseph Smith the founder one of the greatest prophets ever lived apparently because he in restoring the uh, priesthood through resurrected Peter James and John gave opportunity to bind and seal what is on earth will be bound in heaven eternal marriages though there is no marriage ceremony in heaven as the Bible says it has to be done on this earth or during the thousand years millennium before the resurrection sealed up and people get a second chance even the woman married to seven husbands who was told by Jesus Christ no husband would be in heaven Christ was right under uh, you know <clears throat> the law of, that led to grace anyway there was no sealings and bindings up but from the time of Adam to the time of Enoch Adamic covenant and then taken up to heaven the city of Enoch <clears throat> there were ordinances and covenants and then it was taken off the earth until 1820 and restored this is the testimony of the latter-day saints the bible says not to trust in feelings which really refers to the emotions in the soul because demons live in the soul and they believe in christ too as you do uh, when we get out of the fallen condition we enter into spirit level and then we come to know christ latter-day saints Put on the fig leaf of Adam which is the old covenant mind you from the time of Adam to Enoch and they get buried in it and they knock at the veil at the temple to prove themselves worthy to enter into the celestial kingdom which is called exaltation and yet the Bible says to take off the fig leaf of Adam put on the lamb skin which I've done and then if you return to a works based religion you, grace is in your heart it's sufficient and then you can practice the covenant and just do your best to be all, all obedient but you're really just pleasing man and answering and confessing however um, your obedience is, is not <clears throat> is not done by you to prove worthy it's done by Christ who repented on the cross past present and future for all our sins and when we trust in him which is the great command more so than anything uh, you are lifted up 
and you are carried through the great tribulation of your suffering or your persecution or whatever you're going through and you made whole and perfect except you be perfect you cannot enter the kingdom of God it doesn't mean literally mechanically as a lot of people striving and fear shame and guilt sets in and beat themselves up thinking they might go to hell then they're never assured of salvation well grace teachings is you are you is saved not being saved modern translations change that to being saved which entraps you in religion to answer to man prophets priests leaders it says you are saved you may not be exalted but you are saved so the next step is okay if I'm a saved Christian what have I got to lose by being a Latter-day Saint Mormon I would choose that not Catholicism uh, that is the counterfeit priesthood but the counterfeit priesthood did not crucify Jesus Christ it was the very true priesthood that the Jews held as hip uh, hypocrites cru crucified Jesus Christ gave the order to the Romans I think the Catholic Church then started up they say upon the rock of Peter um, and kind of showed the world that you know they love the Lord and I believe millions of Catholics who are pure in heart even though being misled by a, pro by a Pope because <coughs> it was never Pope's it was prophet um, will be in heaven I'm not going to judge judge them but their heart is pure so brothers and sisters <coughs> we got to be really careful. Religion can teach some falsehoods, I can tell you. Um, uh, the Bible and the Book of Mormon says Jesus is the eternal God, none formed before and after him. And Corinthians chapter 1 verses 15 and 19 says Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day accordingly to the scriptures, and if you keep this in memory you shall have eternal life. Right? That means eternal life in the presence of God. And later they saints say eternal life is to be with God the Father, which is above Jesus Christ or part of the Godhead, but a separate being. Uh, everlasting life is just resurrection, and that's the grace for all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you know, eternal life is to be with God. And according to the Bible Jesus Christ was God of, of the Old Testament and the New Testament and suddenly now we have a God beyond that I mean Jesus Christ the Father who emptied himself in heaven and cried out on the cross oh Father why dost thou forsake me talking to himself don't we I mean my soul talks to spirit uh, sometimes the prayer doesn't go directly to God but it goes directly to my higher self which then relays the message to God if it's sincere spirit can talk to soul spirit can give command to soul spirit should lead the soul and men who are Christians should be spirit kings and the woman being emotionally more matured if they are decent are soul queens all right spirit should lead over soul because soul can drag even spirit down to hell and, and be made held accountable people very some people are very strong in the soul and so strong and so smart uh, uh, they can mislead and crush you like an insect you've got to get out of soul into spirit so you don't get deceived by these soul powerful leaders in religion or politics or you know life in general big business <clears throat> so I just step out of it I, I have a bird's eye view uh, as I did when I had my near death accident and encountered an angel when I was seven years of age I could even see my own soul body within the body of flesh and bone uh, mumbling and scared of death and all the fear as I stepped out I was watching myself in fear I don't want to die I don't want to die I don't want to die it was talking to it to itself it had no faith it is in spirit where we have the mighty faith we are spirit beings that come to earth to have a physical experience, not the other way around so much. Physical beings come to earth to have a spiritual experience. We are already spiritual beings. We are already intelligences. God's creation made in his image. The glory of God is intelligence. Brothers and sisters, I testify to you that on the level of spirit, we, can, we are made whole and perfect that way. We're not sinning then when we're in spirit, but we do fall out. Anyone that says they're without sin is a liar. 
we do sin again but truly converted Christians are not going to commit the serious sins which is anything to do with negativity hate resentment malicious gossip destroys families lovers of money lovers of pleasure all this sort of thing all right um, if two people not married and they love each other and for some reason they can't get married I can tell you the situations like that it could be the mafia's daughter and and uh, you know what I mean you can't rush into marriage then can you and she might be a Christian but her father's a gangster so you delay it end up sleeping together but you love each other there are situations where there has been delay I knew a seven-day Venice couple had children and everything but he, he, he wasn't seven-day Venice eventually got converted they were attending church for years ended up a pastor in the church now in the latter-day Saint Church if two people are living together you could be removed so this is this is what happens sometimes it's best to keep things to yourself it's between you and God have a personal relationship you know when you do right and wrong if there is a, such a thing as right and wrong or what rather works it doesn't work to kill people it doesn't work to hate and resent because it does damages yourself we're all made in the likeness and image of God so what we're doing is hurting others is hurting ourselves there are a thousand people in the room how many people in the room including you one it's all you you and them are you and them and you are them and them are the person that is declaring uh, he is also one in the oneness of it all we are the only creation human um, as science is yet to proven that exist in all the universes through time and space and everything the very demons that roam the earth Prince of the air, the UFOs and the aliens, all demons. All right? They're not from outer space. They're from the wormhole, uh, other other realms, dimensions. There may be real, sincere, uh, true alien beings out there somewhere. Um, <clears throat> but at the moment, all we have is the demons trying to deceive us, to trick us, to make us think that there is no God. We come from reptilians. And we just wrote, we, and they are yet to make that announcement. I can tell you what's that sort of thing going on in Area 51. They've got a machine, a number machine, a highly sophisticated one, and communicating with them. And uh, they are saying they're going to take over the earth, or they're giving power to governments, one world government, antichrist, communist, and all that sort of thing. However, they don't want you to blow the world up because they want to take over it. So, that, in some way, they're protecting from us blowing ourselves up. So, they've got uh, some good points but only for world takeover <clears throat> so um, they're among us hybrids as well anyway I've made videos on all of this sort of thing you can think I'm crazy or whatever but one day we'll find out and little kids will be running out in the street and saying uh, that, that's my god a reptilian I'm dancing to my reptilian DNA <laughs> The evolutionists will get a shock. One minute we come from apes, next minute we're coming from reptilians. <laughs> anyway, interesting, isn't it? Before Adam and Eve, there was a reptilian race. Uh, but the Lord God, in the, I think it's second or third chapter of Genesis, he put the spark into us. He put the spirit into us, our spirit. Perhaps the first Adam and Lilith didn't have spirit, but had soul activated whole different ball game and that seed may even exist today and they're among us all right <clears throat> some of us are not meant to become mass murderers and try to kill millions of people uh, they, may, they may not even have a spirit they may even have a soul and, the, and all the people from Noah's time locked up in hell they were actually locked up because they were human and hybrid mixed and God repented he ever made man they could they can repent as well but a lot of them will not because because they've got that reptilian DNA descent in them and look I don't know does it sound fair or not well you're lucky you're not a cockroach are you? you're human and you're a human for eternity regardless where you end up he heaven or hell how grateful we should be that we're human not a cockroach of course animals love being animals they don't question that animals are beautiful any any living creature that has feelings uh, have a soul uh, probably be resurrected all right <clears throat> I don't know about cockroaches spiders and snakes but certainly not the reptilian creatures they that all they have is now right and the spirit beings that
cause that mix with the DNA with apes, sex, uh, humans and apes, humans and reptilian thing all going on before Adam and Eve, um, half human, they get to be judged uh, where the, the spirit demons, that ones that, and devil that basically pull down the angels from heaven to lust and want the woman here, uh, they will just be locked up. That only that'll only be for a thousand years, and then released again, and that'll be the last one. It's called the Battle of Gog and Magog. That's the Fourth World War. Yep, there you go, brothers and sisters. Interesting, isn't it? So anyway, heaven or hell, choice is ours. Separated from Jesus Christ is hell. Wherever you end up, I pray we make the right choices, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.